knowing the verses is fine. Applying the verses is fine. But if, as Paul said in his introduction, if you're not doing it with love, there's no point and you're nothing. What's up, YouTube? Ryan here, and welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, I am always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And today we get to have an incredible conversation about love. Stick around. This is going to get lumped into my series on gay and God loving everyone God made and everything God said, but this is a, a sub. This is a different thing. So before we get to chapter one in our exposition of this book about different not deterring love, I think we need to have a conversation about what is love. And here's why. Look, I knew when I was going to tackle this topic and when I was going to kind of confess my own sin and my own shortcomings according to God's word uh, publicly on YouTube that my subscriber count was going to drop and that I was going to get hateful, evil, spiteful, bigoted comments. And I have. So... But one of the, the one that shocked me the most was true Christians love everybody, but clobber verse, clobber verse, clobber verse, you're going to hell. God's angry at you. You haven't repented right. You need to stop. You need to blah, 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 and bullshit. You, this is a problem. And I'm sure there are Lutherans that do this too, but this is a problem inside Christianity. I love you. That's why I'm beating you with a baseball bat composed of God's verses. So what is love? Before we can understand the parable of the Good Samaritan as not only Jesus telling us who is our neighbor and how do we show them love, we have to understand what love itself is. And so we're going to turn to the only source and norm for all that can rightly be called Christian doctrine, and that is the Word of God. So turn with me. I've got it up here on the laptop. Open your Bibles with me. We're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're starting with verse 1. Paul writes, If I speak in the tongues of men and angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. So what are we learning here? Knowing the passages, knowing the scriptures, Doing the right things, going through the motions can be done in a wrong way and for the wrong reasons. And the right way and the right reason is love. So what is love? Verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Now here's an interesting question. Am I bringing this passage up as law or gospel? If the law verses are blue and the gospel verses are red, I think this, this passage of scripture has the potential to be purple. This can be law if it convicts us that this is not how we're treating other people. But this is gospel, because where do we see this love in action? On the cross. When Christ was on the cross, he lived this. He was patient and kind. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. He didn't envy or boast. He wasn't upset or angry or bragging about how I'm sinless, I don't deserve to be up here. He was quiet and submissive to the suffering. And he certainly wasn't arrogant or rude. He didn't blast the people that were nailing him. He didn't blast the people that were mocking him. Just you wait and see. I'm coming back from the dead. No, he just quietly endured. He wasn't insisting on his own way. He was submitting to the Father's will. And he certainly wasn't rejoicing in the wrongdoing. As a matter of fact, because he rejoiced in the truth, he was there as the remedy for wrongdoing. He was exchanging God's wrath for his righteousness. He was taking God's wrath on himself so that he could give to us the righteousness of God. He bore all things on that cross, not just the pain, the nakedness, the shame, the scourging, the nails. He, 
he bore all the wrath of God, which is something we will never understand. He cried out, Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So that you and I will never understand what it feels like to be forsaken by God. He believed all things, hoped all things, and certainly endured all things. So this is a kind of a law and a gospel verse for us. When our love falls short, this can be law, which tells us this is how you have to be to people. And this is also gospel because it shows us who Jesus is for us. Look, I know it's in all of us, me, you, and everybody, to use these clobber verses on any number of sinners. If, if someone drinks alcohol and you don't agree with it, you're going to clobber them with the verses about not getting drunk. If someone is struggling with same-sex attraction, you're going to hammer Leviticus and Corinthians and Romans on them. But love has to come first. There's no other way to get people to trust us and feel and perceive that we have their best interest at heart if we don't just shut up and love them first. This is what love looks like. So if you are the kind of person, when I am the kind of person that says, I love you, and then I just start hammering them with God's law, we're both of us doing it wrong. And look, I'm not perfect. I screw this up every single day. I'm listening to myself as I'm telling you, believe me, this is love. So when we open up Gay and God and we get back to this book about different, not deterring love and how our perceived enemy is actually our neighbor and the one we're called to love. And we see what that love looks like according to Jesus. We're no longer allowed to say, I love you. That's why I'm beating you with a baseball bat made of Bible verses. This is love. And when I don't love like this, I must repent and ask God to change my heart. If you don't love sinners like this, then you need to repent and ask God to change your heart. Knowing the verses is fine. Applying the verses is fine. But if, as Paul said in his introduction, if you're not doing it with love, there's no point and you're nothing. Love must come first. And sometimes that means years and years and years of just being a genuinely decent human being with someone before you even get to a point where you can talk about God's word, which is a chapter that will be addressed in this book. So if you're waiting for me to get to the clobber verses, if you're waiting for me to get to a point where I can say one way or the other how God feels about same-sex attraction, you're still going to have to follow along. I'll get there. The book addresses it. The pastor addresses it. But I'm not going to come out and say it until we get to that chapter. So just if you care, follow along. And if, like me, you haven't loved people like this, there is a God who loves you like this. And if you confess your sins, he will be faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and the mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.